Diwali symbolizes the victory of light over darkness, and it's a time of great happiness throughout India and the diaspora. It's traditional to offer sweetmeats as a symbol of love, friendship, and prosperity. And Mela shares the joy this week. When I was a child, my favorite room in the house was the kitchen. My favorite room is still the kitchen, and I got to spend lots of time with my mom and gran. The days leading up to Diwali were definitely the most exciting. There was lots going on, and my mom and gran were a tiny bit stressed out because they had to make sure all the desserts and sweetmeats were picture perfect. I'm going to share some flop-proof recipes with you today. We've got an eggless rose and cardamom cake, pistachio muggage, and a saffron almond pita. I'm starting out with the cake first, and for that, I've already creamed some butter and sugar. Flour going in and alternate with the liquid. On a low speed, turn up the mixer, the milk powder, pour in the milk, baking powder, cardamom, bicarb, add a little more flour, add the remaining milk, now add the remaining flour, 200 ml of dessert cream here and 100 ml of rose water. Keep the beater going on a low speed and try not to overbeat the mixture. It will result in a really heavy cake. The batter is smooth and it's ready. Spoon the batter into a prepared cake tin. I'm using three 20 centimeter cake tins for this. One of the things I've learned while making this cake is an eggless cake should be baked at a lower temperature. I'm baking this off about 25 minutes at 160 degrees Celsius. Shake the tins just to make sure you even out the batter. Bake them in a preheated oven. While the cake's in the oven, I'm going to start with the pistachio muggage. And for that, I've got unsalted butter here, 500 grams going into a pot. And while that's melting, 100 grams of fresh cream and some chickpea flour. Pour the fresh cream into the chickpea flour. Use a spoon to work those ingredients together. It starts to form crumbs. The crumbs give the muggage a crunchy texture. And that's what it should look like. Pop this into the melted butter and cook that over a low heat for about an hour to an hour 15 minutes. What I suggest you do is to save some of that mixture just so you can compare it and mark its progress as it cooks. So it's quite yellow now. We need this to be almost like a milky chocolate brown. Now you keep stirring. It's a great recipe if you have lots of kids around the house that can help you. They all take a turn. The cakes have been in the oven for about 25 minutes. Taking a break from the muggage just to take the cakes out of the oven. Now don't be alarmed if these cakes have a scone-like texture. That's perfect. Leave the cakes to cool and get back to the chickpea flour. I've been stirring for a while now. The mixture's cooked. The butter's separated from the chickpea flour and I can see these lovely crunchy bits as well. Let's have a look. We started out with quite a yellow mixture and now it looks like a deep caramel in color. That's what we're looking for. Now don't worry if the mixture looks quite dark. We're going to add milk powder and icing sugar and it's gonna lighten up the mixture quite a bit. Switch off the heat and leave that to cool till it reaches room temperature. I'm going to start with the saffron almond pedas. If you love creamy fudge and barfi, you're going to love this recipe. It's quick and easy to make, and you don't need to make up a syrup either. First ingredient going into the mixing bowl, some soft butter. 125 grams, cream that until light and fluffy. To the butter, gradually add some icing sugar, just a little at a time. That looks quite smooth and creamy. Cardamom powder into the mixing bowl. And to that, gradually add the milk powder. And 
Once the milk powder's in, add some dessert cream. And next, some fresh cream with saffron. That's ready. The milk powder and dessert cream should come together to form soft dough. Slightly buttery in colour, with little streaks of saffron. What I love about this recipe, is it tastes quite similar to barfi, but it's a lot easier to make. When you're quite confident with this recipe, you can also try stuffing each one. Just press down the mixture slightly, pop an almond into the center. I always think it's a lovely treat to find a nut in a dessert. And here I've got some almonds. These are tinted already, they're bright red in color. Close the jar, I've got some gold dust in here. This beautifully coats the almonds in this gold dust. Garnish this with some gold leaf. Grab an almond, press that down. These look exotic and dainty. They pale in colour with a streak of saffron here and there. The mixture should have cooled down for the muggage. I'm going to finish up on that. Ground cardamom, some milk powder, and icing sugar. Gently stir those ingredients together. And the colour does change. It's a lot lighter than it was when we started. I've greased the dish with butter and lined it with plastic wrap. That makes it a lot easier to get the muggage out the dish. Scoop the muggage into the prepared dish. Now, if your mixture is too crumbly, just add a little melted butter to it and press it into the prepared tin. A few more scoops. And that's the last of it needs to set in the refrigerator for a while, but first, lightly salted chopped pistachios going on top. I prefer the salted ones. They work quite nicely with the sweetness. Cover this with the plastic wrap and leave it to set in the refrigerator. To finish up on the cake, we've got some buttercream frosting here. Spoon some of the frosting on the first layer. I'm using a cake stand to present the cake. To make the frosting, I've whipped some butter until it's light in colour, added some icing sugar and whipped that until it's light and fluffy. I've added some vanilla essence, some cream and a bit of rose essence as well. Second layer. Use a spatula to spread that over. Last layer going on top. And like I said, don't be worried if the top of the cake has a scum-like texture, it's still quite a soft cake. Press that down. Now frost the sides of the cake. And here I've got some pink food colouring. I'm going to swirl that over and around the sides of the cake. And lastly, swirl some of that food colouring onto the top of the cake. To garnish this cake, I'm using some pink rose petals and I've dusted this with edible gold dust. You could also use tinted almonds if you like, or the sides of the cake. Using some chopped pistachios. Just sprinkle them around the side and gently lift the pistachios and press them into the frosting. That's my festive Diwali cake done. The best part is now I get to sample the treats. I've prepared a saffron and almond pedda, pistachio magaj and a rose cardamom cake. These recipes can be found on the Mela Facebook page and from me, happy Diwali.